I'm gonna name this video Bailing Around Mud Holes. Okay. Oh, that's all I can say is you gotta bail around mud holes down here. Alright, so you're going along and the hay is here, it's in front of you. Yes, it's mulch hay, so we don't worry that it's been rained on. Uh, and then all of a sudden you get shit like that. Just out of the blue, it'll just, the bottom will drop out of you and you are playing in the mud. Now, the tractor floats really good and I got good tires on it so that it will continue to float and pull through, but I know up there, and the reason I know up there is really bad is because last winter when I made this farm, I think I did this in January or early February. Uh oh, somebody's off, right? Um, early February, I uh, I did this farm and there was just springs popping up all over the place. Now the reason it's it's really wet down here, and it wasn't it was mowed before it became this wet. But the day that I went to North Carolina to pick up the hay wagon, that was last Thursday, almost a week ago, um, at home we had, we had rain. We had almost an inch of rain. And, you know, I can deal with almost an inch of rain. Big deal, seven-tenths of an inch. Wow. It's not like it's the worst thing to happen. But down here, and that's stagnant water. Man, that water is so stagnant. Oh, it's crazy. That water is just laying there. Been laying there. It isn't draining away. It's it's terrible. I guarantee if I look behind me, I've got drag marks in this in the in this here. If you look over there, there's a spot where the tractor just disappeared, and then there's a hole here. It's an old groundhog hole. There isn't an ounce of water in it. Talk about a pain in my ass. And then you get those stagnant holes. And of course, where I'm at right now, I can feel that I'm starting to slow down. Um, I have to be careful because I don't want to get stuck. Okay, let's reverse that. And this tractor isn't exactly the best tractor to have on this baler. It is a light tractor. Uh, yeah, no, it's still not going to eat it, but uh, it's a light tractor. It's not a not a real heavy tractor. It's 7530, so um, I would be much better off with an 8000 series tractor on here, but I just cannot afford it right now. I can't afford an 8000 series tractor. I have the 8120 that I can put this on, but it's too... Uh, it's too in demand with the loader on it at the, at the moment. And if this weather continues to be wet, I will I will bite the bullet. I'll take the loader off and I'll put that tractor on this baler and just call it a day. You know, and put this tractor in the role of something else, like braking or whatever else I gotta do. So this tractor runs the baler okay, but it's a little scary on the roads because it has such a heavy baler behind it. The baler weighs more than the tractor, which is never the best scenario. Um, it is 100 degrees outside right now, and my AC is barely keeping up, I think. Um, but it's just hot out there. But anyway, so uh, this tractor, it pulls it. It does its job. Um, you're not going to go to the races with it. If I had the 85 30 on this baler, then I would have been through this already. I'm pretty sure I would have just flew right through it without too much trouble. Um, but Teresa broke that power takeoff shaft, so kind of SOL on that baler right now. That's the older baler. So the new PTO isn't coming until Tuesday. Today, I believe, is Wednesday. Or today, Friday, Thursday. I have no idea what today even is. Shit. I'm fine. Okay, so it's Wednesday the 17th. Wednesday the 17th. Uh, it'll be Tuesday before my my uh, new 
power takeoff shift shows up. And this is the weird shit. Look at this. Water. Just out of the blue. Water. And then I get to the low side, and there is no water. So there's definitely a spring there. And that spring has got to be bubbling up and the water's evaporating before it makes a mud hole actually in the in the waterway here, the terrace. So I gotta deal with that kind of crap. Oh, it's just been this this property has been herocious. Herocious, horrendous, horrendous to attempt to get off. So, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do, but man, I'm tired of it. I would like the weather to get back to norm, a little bit of normalcy because um, I actually have to pick up all these bales and then I'm going to hit it again with fertilizer, uh, a decent blend of, of potash and phosphate, and sulfur, potash, nitrogen, sulfur, potash, phosphate, NPK, S. Uh, we're going to do that, get her running again, have a nice cut in the fall. Probably with all the moisture that we have been having, I could I could hit this with a 70 units of uh, nitrogen plus the the 40 units of potash and the uh, 35 units of uh, phosphate and the uh, uh, what is it eight or 10 10 17 units of sulfur and I'd really be producing some serious second cut off of here, probably more than half again as much as I'm getting right now. But again, I'm on a farm that has these weird springs and washouts and stuff. So I'm probably only going to put 35 pounds of nitrogen. And you know, uh, yeah, 23 or 22 and a half pounds of, of potash or 20 pounds of potash and you know, we'll just work it that way. Cut the rate pretty much down by half or close to half just so that I can, uh, you know, be on the safe side. I won't lose too much if it gets too wet. But I, I do love this farm. It's a great farm, but you get shit like this. I mean, this was never like this. This was never like this. And Timothy ended up in there. I'm not going to end up in there. I'll tell you that right now. I'm pulling out right here. And then you just get around it a little bit, and boom, you're around it. So I don't know. It never used to be like this. Uh, I think the, the extraordinarily large amount of rain and fall that we have had over the last uh, 20 months, not tw 12 months, 12 months. I don't know who that is, but I'm not going to answer it. The extraordinarily large amount of rainfall that we've had over the last year, 12 to 13 months now, has really just filled all the aquifers and we won't have any we won't have any problems with our wells going dry, that's for sure. But we're looking at more rain coming at us right now through, I guess that was Hurricane Obama, I mean Barry, Barack, Hurricane Barack, yeah, Hurricane Barry. Huh. Come on, over the edge, over the edge, over the edge, around the corner, through the woods, to grandmother's house we go. Holy shit, we did make it, a my, my, me, my, mo. Okay, so I'm going to give you a bail count on this so far since we got back from North Carolina. 851 bales. Uh, I got back, this baler came back uh, a week ago tomorrow. And the other baler is back. That's got a couple hundred bales on it too. So I've bailed over a thousand bales since I've been back from North Carolina, which is a good thing. I uh, really do need to get my bale count up to that 12, 13,000 bale range, which should be pretty easy. 12 to 15,000 bale range. I've already got. You know, between the Heston and what I'm doing, oh, and the, the Heston wasn't, the Heston didn't really do too many bales. I think it did about 500 or so. So, but that that kept us that kept us going with the truck and money coming into the uh, bank accounts because you know what, 
that uh, job I did in North Carolina, I haven't been paid for it yet, and uh, it was, I think next year there needs to be a little different pay schedule with that, like we get halfway through, they give us a third of it, and that would definitely, a third of what we're projected to make, and uh, or even half of what we've uh, made to that point. And that, that would keep them safe and actually make these guys or the crews that are actually running the, the straw job a lot happier because there's a lot of money that goes out. A lot of people don't realize how much money goes out when you're doing a contract job like that. You got a crew of six people, they're eating, they're sleeping, they need their laundry done, you got all that expense and uh, you're burning gasoline in four different vehicles trying to keep the uh, keep the, the everything going plus the diesel fuel and the bale and twine which was part of the contract but you know there was just inherent uh, expenses that were kind of hard to swallow without any income from the job that we were actually doing I broke that string <laughs> interesting uh, yeah so you know it's really hard to swallow a, uh, a bill when you don't have anything coming in other than what is normally coming in up north but you have this extraordinary extraordinarily large amount of uh, expense going on on a separate project so I think there needs to be some work done in that area but and of course it's dry as a fart down there and it's wet as the ocean and I'm not joking but look I mean it's right there I had to get out of it I gotta get out of it and look it's just out of the blue and yeah, they raked it up and it didn't get rained after it raked it's just the water never left it's the water never left and I'm not going that fast either because this is some pretty heavy material believe it or not. Those bales are weighing 1,296 pounds. I'm not running it to the heavy capacity just because I don't really think I need to. Um, I'd rather have reliability with my knotters and 1,200-pound, uh, 1,300-pound bales. 1,300-pound 13, bales I can put on 36 bales or 30, yeah, 36 bales and still come up with 24 tons of material. Uh, on a load, I believe. I don't know. 1,500. You just have to look. 36 bales is what I put on a load, and I generally run between 22 and 25 tons at that. You know, because it doesn't matter what you put in the bale when you're baling it. It's what actually makes it to market. And when you when you bale a bale that's a little damp, which these have some moisture into them, they're not they're not really super dry. They're not wet. I bet they're only 15% moisture, but there's damp spots in them and that'll equalize through the bale and when it, by the time it equalizes through the bale um, you do lose because evaporation steams off you know just normal normal curing process with the hay uh, so if you bale a 1450 pound bale it doesn't mean you're going to get a 1450 pound bale to your market uh, you know, now if it was, uh, even if it was good quality uh, feed hay for cattle or horses, you still wouldn't get that same weight. Uh, so, if you know anything about baling hay, then you would know that to be true, but, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, well, you bale a 50-pound bale, it ought to be a 50-pound, it's not, it's not that way. Uh, so, you can see the dark spots in there, and, you know, it just just really tough conditions. These, these conditions are almost as tough as they were last year. We're getting pretty close to the same uh, the same conditions as we had last year. It, it's really not fun uh, deal, dealing with this, but I'm more equipped to do it thanks to the straw job down in North Carolina. And it just made it that much, uh, I don't say easier, it just made it it, it put enough money in the, in my pocket that I could afford a second crone baler, and uh, you know that got me. Uh, it, I could afford the second crone baler, and that will allow me to bail more at home. You know what I'm saying? Just more at home. So it won't take me nearly as long to do what I did. So my window is short. Uh, my window is short or narrow 
but it is still a window of opportunity and now that I have two crown balers keep the power takeoff shafts on them running uh, which is a weak spot on the crown balers they are a class 8 they're a class 8 power takeoff shaft they don't make them any heavier than this and uh, I was rather shocked because I talked to a driveline specialist yesterday and that man told me flat out he's like hey he said this is the this is the heaviest duty one you're going to get it is the best one that is offered for your application there's nothing else that's going to work as good as this one uh, we did actually change it from a four lug tube to a splined shaft tube on the driveline which will uh, reduce friction when you go around corners and stuff and more than likely uh, more than most definitely prolong the life of the driveline uh, because there's less friction and it's less push and pull on the power takeoff shaft which in essence reduces heat which reduces wear and it should be good you know what I'm saying so I've upgraded the power takeoff shaft uh, from what Crone actually puts on theirs uh, on the balers and the the funny thing about it is if I was to put the power takeoff shaft that Crone wanted on the baler or the baler came through with uh, that power takeoff shaft was over five thousand dollars and they were going to charge me overnight shipping charges of over seven hundred dollars for that and that would have amounted to six close to six thousand dollars damn close to six thousand dollars so I went to a, uh, a drive shop, a shop that actually uh, builds power takeoff shafts. Um, I want to say it's uh, Drive Lines of Fresno, California. That's, I believe that's the name of the company, Drive Lines of Fresno, California. And those, that company uh, builds those drive lines and you know you they buy the parts and they put them together for the specific pieces of equipment so when they build me up my drive line it's all bendoli pavisi bendoli bendoli pavisi shaft uh, they have all the different tubes and the different sizes and the different classes of of, of power takeoff you know or drive line and so I called up they have the specs that's required they over it and they sold me that drive line for one third of what it would have costed costed yes a cost I was accosted by the dealer on that shaft, but that driveline company, yes, it's going to take a lot longer for me to get that shaft. I could have overnighted it for the $700 for the overnight charges um, and still been like within three, uh, right around $3,000 for that shaft instead of close to six. So as it was, the shaft cost me plus an extra plastic shielding for this shaft that's on this baler. Uh, that was $189, uh, whereas if I bought it from the, from the dealership or from Crone itself, that same shield would have been $700. Yes, that kind of money, it's insane. So uh, they, they, they hooked me up with a new uh, shield for this, this baler and this drive line and a new, a complete new drive line and the shipping for that for 2635 bucks. And it will be here on Tuesday. So if you're looking for a drive line and you are in the United States and you want an alternative to the uh, to the, uh, the dealership on that, then you can do Drive Lines Incorporated from Fresno, California. Mike, the guy behind the counter there, he did an awesome job. Uh, took my info, made sure that I knew exactly what it was going to cost before I pulled the trigger on it, and I was more than thrilled to talk to him. Very nice man. And he's worked there for over 30 years. So if you've got a company that your employees are there for 30 plus years, uh, then 
that's probably a pretty damn good, reputable company. Uh, there was a company out here in Pennsylvania, and they actually told me to go to this Drive Lines Incorporated from Fre of Fresno, California, because they couldn't build the shaft for what the guys from Fresno could, and it would probably take less time because they would have to purchase their parts from Fresno, California. So there you go. Uh, you can look it up online. It's real simple to do. Um, just look it up. And they build PTO shafts for anything. When you go to large square, they got categories for large square balers. They have it from John Deere, Crone, Coon, all of them, New Holland, Challenger, Heston, they're all over there. And, uh, you know, there you go. They have it in stock. In stock. So, there it is. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked my yammering on because I did it for like 15 minutes. I know there were some people that said that my videos were too short and this is what my day is like from day to day, every day, chasing 